Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to walk you through the journal entries required when you sell a fixed asset for cash. So here we go. Um, selling an asset involves receiving money. Typically, you see the word for this is proceeds. So anytime you see it says the proceeds from the sale, they're literally referring to essentially the cash that you received. Um, so it involves receiving money for the fair value of the asset because you're, you're selling this in an open market. Um, and recording a gain or loss for the difference between the cash received and the book value of that asset, which you said it was worth. Um, and so here's an example journal entry where you see in this case, um, the company received $30,000 in cash. They sold an asset with a historical cost of $70,000 and accumulated depreciation of $50,000. So when we think about our book value of this asset, the book value was only $20,000 because the asset was originally valued at $70,000, but $50,000 in value had been used up, leaving a value of $20,000, its book value. Because the company received $30,000 for it, it gets to record a gain on sale of $10,000. Notice that I say down here, gains and losses are reported as other revenues and other expenses on the income statement. So that other section, that's your non-operating portion of the um, income statement, and that's what this exactly is. This is not what your, what your normal course of business is. This is just, hey, you had some assets that you're selling off. Maybe you gained from it, maybe you lost from it, but you have to report that to investors. All right, let's try an example. So FlyerCore decides to sell a building with a historical cost of $559 and up-to-date accumulated depreciation of $225. FlyerCore receives three offers. The first for $200,000 cash, the second for $334,000 cash, the third for $375,000 cash. Now, of course, in this situation, FlyerCore would take the largest offer, right? That's the thing that makes sense. But that's not the point of this exercise. Um, what I'd rather you do is I want to see you record the journal entries as if Flyer Corps accepted each of the three offers, because each of these three offers is going to do something significantly different from a journalizing standpoint. So let's start with the receipt of $200,000 cash. So um, in op I'll call these option one, option two, option three. In option one, you are getting cash, specifically $200,000 worth. You are getting rid of a building with historical cost of $559. So what that means is you've got a ledger building with a debit balance of $559 in it. To get rid of that, we need to credit building for that $559. Now, whenever you get rid of a fixed asset, any accumulated depreciation that goes with that asset also has to be disposed of. And so accumulated depreciation being a contra asset is gonna have a credit balance, in this case of 225. We need to get rid of that 225, so we are going to debit accumulated depreciation building for 225. Try and line these up a little bit better. Give us some breathing room. Okay, tighten that up for the in, for the next entry. Now, what do we do next? Well, here's where we have to ask ourselves: Do we have a gain or do we have a loss on this sale? And so that's going to require us to know what the book value of the asset is. The book value is simply the value that is still left at the point of sale. If we had a building with a historical cost of five fifty nine and it had accumulated depreciation on it of 225, then that means the current book value of this building is $334,000. So I'm gonna put that up at the top because we're gonna need that number again. Now, we were paid $200,000 for this building. We were paid less than what our balance sheet says it's worth. That means we incurred a loss in this transaction. And specifically, we incurred a loss of $134,000. Losses are essentially expenses, and so they are debited. Loss on sale of 
thousand. And now if we were to check, add up our debits, add up our credits, we would see that those debits and credits are indeed equal to one another. This is our full journal entry. All right, let's try um, number two here. Number two says we actually received 334,000 cash. So for, for easing things up on us, I'm just gonna take the journal entry we already, already did, and I'm gonna copy it and paste it over here by number two. I'll move it down, just I'm gonna stagger these to, to give us room to, to operate here. Um, in this situation, what's changed? Well, the cash amount has changed, and we're gonna have to redo whether or not we have a loss or not. So I'm gonna just go ahead and take that one out. What has not changed is we still got rid of a building worth 559,000, and we still got rid of its accumulated depreciation worth 225,000. The difference here is we were paid 334,000 in cash. Well, how does that compare to our book value? Well, it's the same. Whenever you are paid exactly what the valuation of your asset is on your balance sheet, you don't have a gain or a loss. It was an even trade. And so all I need to do here is scoop my credit up. And if you notice, we can even check ourselves. You add your debits and compare it to your credits, and they are already equal. There is nothing else needed in this journal entry. There was no gain or loss in that case. All right. Taking that, copying it over once again. We'll go to scenario three here. There we go. Um, okay, again, our cash is changing, right? In this case, our cash was 375,000. Now, notice I'm leaving the accumulated depreciation alone. I'm leaving the building alone. It doesn't matter what we're offered the amount of the building that's coming off the books, the amount of the accumulated depreciation that's coming off the books, that is unchanged throughout all of these what ifs, right? The only thing that's really changing is how much cash did we receive? Now, in this situation, we received 375 compared to our book value of 334 implies that we were overpaid relative to what our balance sheet said this was worth we were overpaid by $41,000. And so that is what we call a gain on sale, 41,000. And now if you check your debits and credits, you will see that our journal entry is balanced. This loss on sale would show up as a hit to our income on our income statement. This gain on sale would actually bolster our income on our income statement. And in scenario number two, there is no impact to the income statement because we didn't gain or lose, we just broke even. All right, that is your walkthrough of selling fixed assets for cash and the gains or losses that may be associated with that. I hope you found this helpful and I hope you join me for another video.